morning. Good morning, Instagram. How are you? Good morning, Facebook. How are you today? It's Thursday. Almost done with another week. So happy to uh, report that. I'm pretty excited for it to be Friday. While we're talking about the day of the week, my broadcast tomorrow is probably gonna be quite a bit earlier because I have somewhere to be at nine o'clock tomorrow. So I'm gonna be doing my broadcast probably, my guess would be in the seven o'clock hour tomorrow. So, uh, but I will repost it. So if you miss it, you're still sleeping, that's cool. I'll just repost it, it's all good. Good morning, Instagram, good morning, guys. <clears throat> How are we on Facebook over there? Good morning to all of you. So hopefully you guys have been enjoying your week. Good morning. Hi, Diane. Thanks for saying hi over there. Um, so I am Dr. Trisha Pingle, and this is your morning checkup. And you know what we're gonna talk about today? We're gonna talk about the food mood connection. So what foods can really bring your mood down and what foods you can consume that will actually bring it up. And with anxiety and depression um, rampant in our country, it's always good to know about things that we can eat that improve our mood. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So good morning to all of you. I know all of you are still joining. It's only been a minute or so. So just give it a few seconds and then we will dive in, so. Got my fighter mug today, full of coffee. <laughs> it's been a busy week this week. I think it's weird. I think, um, it, you know, like I've said, it's been different. It's different in every state. It's different in every city where you're at, whether you're working, whether you're not, whether you're at home, what, you know, whether you, how you've been impacted by this whole situation is different to everybody. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Uh, for me, this week has been a fairly busy week. Lots of things going on just to take care of. I feel like I've been sitting at my desk more than I should be. So I think this weekend I'm going to have to just kind of chill out, check out a little bit, which is good. That's good for your health. So, okay, I think we have enough people. Let's dive into the food mood connection. For those of you just joining, I am Dr. Trisha Pingle. This is your morning checkup. And I am here Monday through Friday around this time with the exception of tomorrow. I'm gonna to be early tomorrow. I either have a choice of not doing a live at all or doing it really early. So we're gonna go with early, hopefully. I hope everything goes off without a hitch. But today we're gonna to talk about foods. Um, and you may have heard that saying, you are what you eat. In fact, I think that was Garfield that said that. Um, Garfield, for those of you who don't know, was a comic strip character, and I believe he said you are what you eat. Hi, Libby, how you doing? Um, so, um, and this is often in reference to physical health, to weight, but there's actually more behind this because it all relates to food and mood. Remember, our heads are connected to our body. They're not independent of each other. How we take care of our body reflects in our mood. It reflects in how we feel. Okay, so it's very important to always take care of your body so you can get the nutrients that you need to support your brain health as well. And I think a lot of the times we just separate this. You know, <clears throat> we treat weight loss, but we don't necessarily treat the emotional um, connection to that, right? Or we treat depression, but we don't always necessarily look like if we're getting enough nutrients in our body or your psychologist or psychiatrist might not ask you about your diet. You know, they're asking about how you feel, have you had any trauma, but what about what you're putting inside your body? So these are very, very important things. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So scientists have proven, and we're gonna talk about it, that foods you eat have the ability to impact your mental state, including your mood, your disposition, and even your memory and reasoning, right? And certain mental states and concerns, such as stress, anxiety, depression, have been linked to increased likelihood of other illnesses, of developing other physical illnesses. So this is important to consider. We are what we eat, okay? So we have talked a lot about inflammation over these lives and there's no denying, in my opinion, that there is a link between inflammatory foods and major diseases as illnesses, such as cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and even seasonal allergies, okay? But the truth is, those very foods that cause inflammation and ultimately lead to disease can also impact how you feel and your mood. 
So let's talk about the neurotransmitter serotonin. Now I figure most of you might have heard of that neurotransmitter. That's the neurotransmitter that keeps us happy. It's the neurotransmitter that's behind all of the antidepressant medications. If you've heard the term SSRI or serotonin reuptake inhibitor, right? Serotonin keeps us happy and smiley and that's what most of these drugs are about. They're recycling serotonin. However, did you know that about 90 to 95% of your serotonin is actually made in your gut? Which means if your gut is inflamed, you have an impact in your serotonin production. We've also talked a lot about how the brain and the gut communicate in order to balance mood. So it would make sense that what you eat makes a difference in your mood, right? So. I have some stats on here, so sorry, I had to look. Let's see. So, um, yeah, 90 to 95%, and this is estimated from studies, 90 to 95% of your serotonin is made in your gut. Now, your body must also have adequate nutrition in order to make serotonin, okay? And that comes from vitamin C and vitamin B6 specifically. So, if you're not eating these vitamins, or if you're eating inflammatory foods that are not allowing you to absorb these vitamins, that will also impact your neurotransmitter production. And on top of that, if you're eating inflammatory foods and your gut is inflamed, what happens to your gut flora? Those beautiful bugs in there that keep your brain and body connected, right? So you also have impacts on mood due to poor flora. Digestion is critical in your mood, critical. It's critical in neurotransmitter production, 100%. When you're eating foods that cause problems in your digestion or cause inflammation, you are going to have higher rates of mental disturbance, whether that be a mild depression, anxiety, could even go as far as sleep disturbances, but that's what's gonna happen, okay? You will also typically have lower vitamin consumption. In fact, a study revealed that participants with low levels of vitamin B6 were more likely to experience symptoms of depression. Accordingly, when the researchers gave vitamin B6, it improved these symptoms, okay? Where do we get vitamin B6? From our gut, small intestine mostly, okay? Another contributing factor is inflammation. When your gut is inflamed, it impacts its ability to do its job. And if you're under stress, guess what folks? Also impacts the ability for the gut to do its job, okay? We have to let our body rest and digest. We have to absorb nutrients. That's why we're here. That's why we eat. We don't eat for the flavor. I mean, that's cool and I like it and I like good food, but that's not why we eat. We eat for nutrition. We eat to fuel our body. We eat to carry out these processes like mood and hormones and regulation and stress management. That's why we eat, okay? So, um, in a 2012 study, so let's talk, well, let's talk about the study. So we're talking about inflammation. Guts inflamed have problems with brain. That's the bottom line right there, okay? And there was a 2012 study uh, that revealed that eating a diet that was high in refined carbohydrates and what they used were flour, white bread, pasta, white rice, and table sugar were linked to higher inflammation in your gut. They were also linked to leptin resistance. Now, what is that, right? Leptin resistance. Leptin is the hormone that signals your brain that you've had enough food. It's your hunger center, okay? Where that decides whether or not you can, whether you should keep eating or not. So those types of foods, shut that off, which makes you eat more food and more of that food. And guess what that leads to? Undesirable weight, bad moods, feeling like you ate too much, beating yourself up. I mean, how many of you, I mean, I know I have, like, I don't know, I'm having a stressful day or something and I eat something that maybe I shouldn't and then afterwards I'm beating myself up about it, right? But the bottom line is, is my body asked for that and I listened to it and maybe it's because something was out of whack, right? So we have to pay attention to those signals and we have to recognize whether they're real or not, okay? If you're eating a lot of refined carbohydrates, pretty darn sure your hunger center is off, okay? Unfortunately, here in America, what do we eat? refined carbohydrates. We also eat a ton of processed foods, full of chemicals, full of dyes, full of quick fixes because we're simply too busy to cook our own food, right? And we are, okay? There was another study in 2017 that revealed that men who consumed the most sugar were 23% more likely to experience depression and other common mental disorders. 
The researchers noted though that the negative effects of high sugar consumption also impacted women. Okay, so sugar impacts mood. Okay, so let's talk about the four foods that have been shown to depress your mood. And please don't throw food at me because I'm gonna give you the four things that you probably eat is the majority of your diet. Sorry, but I don't mean to burst your bubble, but this is what's gonna happen. <laughs> what it, those bags of Lay's potato chips are so convincing. I hear ya. <laughs> uh, very rarely do I have any type of potato chip, but I'll tell you, sometimes my kids leave out corn chips and inevitably I grab them when I walk by them. So I try to have them keep them in the drawer so I don't touch them because there are some of those things that just get ya, right? Um, all right. So, four foods that bring you down, okay? Meat. Yes, I said meat. Now, we're talking about abundance, people. I'm not saying that you can never have meat, but I'm gonna tell you what the research says if you eat too much of it. Deal? You can make your own decision on what you wanna do. There are so many different diets out there. There's so many people that say, oh, you need to only eat meat. Oh, you need to only eat plants. For me, it kind of comes down to a balance per person, but let me tell you what high levels of meat consumption has been shown to do to your mood. And let's just go from there. Don't throw any bones at me or anything. Give me a moment. Let me explain myself, okay? So, meat can be difficult to digest for many people, myself included, which is why I don't eat it. If you have low stomach acid, which we have discussed on previous um, lives, um, obviously that can help break down meat. And a lot of the meat that we eat here in America is processed. And someone just mentioned that processed meat. Absolutely. It's processed. It's not real meat. There's a difference between game meats or organically grass fed meats and what we mostly get at restaurants here, uh, and in our grocery stores, um, processed meats full of a bunch of stuff. We don't break that down well. Okay. And considering this study, there was a two, okay, so here's a couple studies and, and they kind of, we kind of have to extrapolate here, but in a 2013 survey, 72% of Americans reported experiencing at least one troubling digestive symptom a few times each month. Now that could have been gas, bloating, diarrhea, stomach pain, reflux, something to that. Coincidentally though, studies have shown that Americans, oh my God, listen to this, seriously listen to this, Americans consume more than three times the amount of red meat as a global, as the global average. Three times more red meat than the global average. Now, when I'm saying meat and I'm talking about meat here, I am talking about red meat today. Now, there are many other types of meats, right? You've got eggs, you've got poultry, you've got seafood. We're talking about red meat three times. That is way too much red meat. And trust me, I very I doubt that it is all organic and grass fed or that you went out and hunted it or whatnot because that would be a lot. So that is a lot. Now, I can't conclusively say that the two of these things are related, that these digestive issues and the red meat are related. But it's interesting, right? I mean, if we're eating that much meat in America and we look at our top diseases in America and depression and anxiety definitely being up there, we need to take a look at that. We need to take a closer look at that, in my opinion, okay? Um, there is, research has also shown though, and this has been shown, that people who consume lots of red meat and specifically processed red meats have a higher chance of developing major chronic inflammatory disorders. And these include type two diabetes, heart disease, obesity, and many cancers. Okay, so if I said to you, okay, if you eat hot dogs every day, you have an X percent likelihood of developing cancer, would you stop? You know, like let's think about our food as what it does to our body, right? Let's think about what that does. If I said, well, if you eat 75% plants every single day, you lower your risk by X amount for cardiovascular disease. I mean, these are things that are important. These are things that are within our control, okay? And we can do that. We can be in that control, all right? Um, so meat consumption, inflammation kind of go hand in hand. Inflammation affects serotonin, serotonin affects mood. Okay. Not to mention gut flora, which we've talked about before. Um, 
I lost everyone on Facebook there, I think. Anyway, if you're still out there, wave. Um, so, okay, number two, we talked about earlier this week, so I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on it, but number two are dairy products. Yes, dairy products have been linked to lower mood. Why? Inflammatory. I mean, the milk protein in dairy, uh, casein has some inflammatory components. I talked about this at length in my live earlier this week. I also have an article on dairy and how dairy is linked to inflammatory disorders. Just a reminder, for those of you that forgot or for those of you that weren't here, we are the only mammal that consumes milk past infancy and we don't even consume our own milk. We consume another animal's milk. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, thank you, Kathy. I'm glad you confirmed you were there. I appreciate it. Hi, Stephanie. Thank you, guys. Um, so um, there are a ton of alternatives to dairy. Dairy is one of those inflammatory foods that can affect your mood. Number three, we've already talked about, and that's sugar, right? Um, eating a significant amount of sugar has been linked to higher gut inflammation in studies, leptin resistance, and obesity. Okay, now, if you look at obesity in our country, we need to do something about it, okay? Because what's happening is that's putting these wonderful people at higher risk of diabetes, heart disease, cancers, and other inflammatory disorders. Okay, and we have enough disease in America. We need to back it off and we can do that by altering our diet. So lowering sugar is helpful in that. When I talk about sugar, um, for those of you that are more technical savvy, sugar means a lot of different things, doesn't it? You know, if I eat, if I eat a, um, like, if I eat a yogurt with a little bit of uh, honey in it, that's sugar, right? If I eat a sweet potato, that's sugar. I'm talking about refined processed white sugars. That's what I'm talking about. Cut those out. Replace them with things like maple syrup or honey or other sorts of natural sugars. If you're diabetic and you have a lot of trouble with sugar, or you're really watching your carbs, you're a keto fanatic or something, go with monk fruit. Ever heard of monk fruit? Monk fruit uh, is a good alternative for you. Check that out. I actually have a recipe on my website with monk fruit um, and I have um, an article on it at drpingle.com. So check it out. Um, okay, number four, all of you could totally guess. I know you could guess it. Number four, mood uh, dumping food <laughs> would be alcohol, right? I think we can all agree that when you drink too much alcohol, it affects your mood, right? Um, now, um, an occasional alcoholic beverage is typically well tolerated, okay? Consistent alcohol consumption has been shown to cause significant inflammation in your gut, and long-term alcohol consumption is linked to systemic inflammation, right? We don't want to be putting toxins in our body every single day. It's one thing to occasionally enjoy a nice margarita, uh, but to have it on a daily basis and be putting alcohol in our body every day um, is not helpful to our brain, okay? Um, in fact, drinking alcohol has been shown to negatively impact the chemicals in your brain, um, causing more severe mood swings. Okay? Now, there are mocktails, too. You could always make your favorite cocktail without alcohol in it. I know, crazy. You know what I do? Um, for me, I found, so I'll give you a personal story real quick. So my mom passed of cancer, okay? And we were very close. And what we used to do is sit down and get together and have a glass of wine. I mean, I'm talking like in my 20s, you know, like 20s, late 20s, uh, early 30s, before I had kids even, we would, I would get together with her, we'd take vacations, we'd sit down, we'd have a glass of wine. And there was something very nostalgic about that. My husband and I enjoy sitting on the patio in the evening um, and just spending time together. So. I don't want to drink that wine though. I don't want to drink alcohol that often. It's not of interest to me and it's definitely not of interest to the health of my body. So I take a wine glass and I put sparkling water in it because the holding the wine glass <clears throat> and sitting, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> still morning, holding the wine glass and sitting on the patio gives me the same nostalgia. I've, I've learned it's not really the wine that I need, it's the environment. So try that. Try putting juice in a wine glass or if you're a scotch drinker, take a scotch glass and put something else in there and sit in the same environment and have that social interaction. You may find you get even more from it on an emotional level and definitely on a physical level. All right, so <laughs> I've told you what, one, what foods deplete your mood. Let's talk about the foods that elevate your mood. <clears throat> and then all of you can go make yourself some breakfast with all of these lovely foods. 
don't know why my voice is froggy today. I guess maybe too much coffee. I'm getting too excited. All right. The anti-inflammatory diet, which typically is looked at as the Mediterranean diet, has a ton of research behind it. Um, numerous studies have shown that eating a diet high in vegetables, fruits, and gluten-free grains will lower inflammation. In fact, traditional whole food diets, such as the Mediterranean diet, have been known to lower inflammation as well as reduce heart disease and risk of diabetes. Okay, two of our top uh, killers here in America, heart disease and diabetes can be solved with a Mediterranean plant-based, nut-based type diet. Now that does allow some meat as well, okay? So for those of you that are afraid to go vegan, there are some options for you that will benefit your health, okay? Um, in, in fact, according to a 2013 study, they looked at seniors that had no history of depression, okay? And they followed them on a Mediterranean diet for over seven years, okay? And they found that those that stuck to that diet in general had better moods and less depressive episodes than those that didn't. Um, they also found, let's see, yeah, it was a 98.6% lower annual risk of developing depressive symptoms than those who did not follow the diet. 98%. That's a lot, right? Additional studies found that if you eat and stick to a traditional whole food diet, you will decrease your risk of depression by 25 to 35%. Look at the depression rates in America right now. Look at the anxiety rates in America right now. Look at the cardiovascular disease rates, the obesity rates, the diabetes rates, and tell me if I had one fix, which was to follow a whole food diet and put healthy nutritional food in your body, I could lower all those rates. Let's do it. Why are we not doing it? What stops you? I'd like to ask some of you actually, what stops you? Like when you reach for those foods that you know are not healthy for you, what, like, why do you grab them? Like if I could figure that out, I would have the key right, to health in America. We have to be our own proactive health advocate and that starts at home with your diet and what you put into your body. Okay, enough soapbox. Calm down, Dr. Pingle, right? <laughs> One of my favorite foods that help your mood are berries. Uh, I love berries. I eat blueberries on a daily basis. In fact, here is an awesome stat, eating blueberries has been shown to boost your mood by increasing joy, interest, and alertness within two hours of eating them. So within two hours, you'll feel better from eating blueberries. Raspberries also have a really high fiber component. Um, raspberries are a fantastic thing to add in. Strawberries, anything berry, I'm down with. Um, and uh, they have a lot of antioxidants. So they're looking at boosting the immune system, boosting the mood, providing a bunch of vitamins and minerals for the production of serotonin, which is what we need to do if we wanna stay in a good mood, okay? Now, number two, this one you won't get mad at me for. I think you'll like this one, dark chocolate. So I did a live on chocolate, I think it was a couple weeks ago. It was a great live because there was a lot of, a lot of great interaction, a lot of great studies on the power of cacao, a true 100% cacao on the body. Now, when I say dark chocolate, for those of you that mix that, I'm not talking about what you buy at your grocery store, like at your regular grocery store that's full of a bunch of additives and milk products. Nope, I'm talking vegan, well-sourced, 100%, or 80, you know, 100% cacao powder going into like maybe 70% or above dark chocolate. Okay, well sourced. Look at the source of chocolate, always, okay? Always read the label. But uh, you may be surprised that dark chocolate is known to help your mood. It also helps you control stress. Now I've talked about this before. Stress, I believe, is the underlying root cause of many of the diseases that we have in America. So anything we can do to reduce our stress, improve our mood is A-OK -okay with me. In 2008, there was a study um, that looked at elderly um, and looked at their preference of dessert. And those that chose dark chocolate in general um, after two weeks had less anxiety than where they started. And the people overall had lower anxiety because of eating chocolate. So chocolate can be very helpful. Now number three, my number three food for boosting your mood are walnuts. 
I love walnuts. Walnuts are great. Walnuts have a lot, let me tell you what. They have um, omega-3 fatty acids, which I will talk about in a second, are very involved in mood regulation. They also have a wealth of nutrients. So you know, a lot of people tout um, calcium. We need calcium, we need minerals, we need this from milk. No folks, we need it from nuts, right? If you're allergic to nuts, there are seeds that you can eat. But there is a lot of nutrients in plant-based foods that help support your mood. Walnuts are a great one. They're high in amino acids and they're also high in omega-3 fatty acids and they're known to be anti-inflammatory, okay? Omega-3 fatty acids have been found to decrease the production of certain inflammatory markers in humans. So any food that's full of omega-3 fatty acids is going to benefit your mood, walnuts being one of them. Um, in fact, a 2018 meta-analysis revealed that supplementing with omega-3 fatty acids would actually reduce the symptoms of clinical anxiety so that people didn't have to use medications, which is awesome. So these benefits extend to many omega-3 foods, walnuts being one of my favorite because they're very easy to incorporate and they're very easy to find and they taste yummy, especially in salads and plants and roasted vegetables. Do you, add, do you guys add nuts to roasted vegetables? A lot of people reserve nuts for like nut butters and then also for just putting on salads. But if you toast walnuts and you throw it into like, uh, you know, a roasted root vegetable platter or something, oh my gosh, so good. Um, but this extends to other omega-3 rich foods, flaxseed, chia seed, pecans, hazelnuts, beans, cashews, almonds, olives, olive oil, and one of my absolute favorite avocados. Anybody sell dark chocolate walnuts? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Bill, go check it out. I bet you'll find it. <laughs> avocados, so I did a live on avocados as well because you will never see me go through a day without eating an avocado. And consequently, I'm usually in a pretty darn good mood. As most of you point out, most of the time, <laughs> I'm in a good mood most of the time. Um, but avocados, fantastic. Not only are they great for the omega-3 component, and I'll let you go back and read all about that, but they also contain B vitamins, and they're a great, great way to get some B vitamins, particularly folate. So those of you that have the MTHFR mutation, or you're looking for dietary ways to increase your B vitamins and folate through plants, avocados needs to be on the list, as well as all the nuts, as long as you're not allergic. Vary your nut. And that's are great for that. I will briefly mention yogurt as number five. And the reason I'm gonna do it briefly is we could go on all day about this, but the probiotics is really what that's linked to, okay? So good gut flora affects your mood. Doesn't have to be yogurt, and I don't recommend dairy yogurt. I'm talking about non-dairy yogurts. One of my favorite is Coco Yo. Uh, I love that one. And I love Forager. They're a great brand for cashew yogurts. Um, but really, it's about the... Um, the flora, you know, eating foods in general in your diet that promote natural gut flora are going to help your mood. So it doesn't have to be yogurt, it could be sauerkraut or kimchi or all of these other things out there, but definitely pay attention to that, right? Um, okay, um, and they also uh, lower inflammation, right? Gut brain access. Lastly, number six is broccoli. Now, I think I probably eat broccoli every day too, or some sort of cruciferous vegetable. Cruciferous vegetables, there's quite a lot of them. Broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, you know, those types of things. Cruciferous vegetables are great. Broccoli in particular has a very high fiber content. It also contains a lot of nutrients. So listen to this. A 2018 study looked at depressive disorders and what nutrients are required to treat depression naturally. So if you wanna produce more serotonin, balance out your dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, get yourself in balance, there are 12 nutrients that can help prevent depression and help treat depression. You ready? Folate, and that's methylated folate, people. Methylated folate, iron, omega-3 fatty acids, magnesium, potassium, selenium, thiamine, which is B1, Vitamin A, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, of course methylated, vitamin C, and zinc. Get all those? Folate, iron, omega-3 fatty acids, magnesium, potassium, selenium, thiamine, vitamin A, B6, B12, C, and zinc. Guess what group of vegetables has the majority of these? Cruciferous. Broccoli is your friend. <laughs> you will get a wealth of these nutrients by eating more 
plants. That's what plants contain, okay? That is their makeup. And what's gorgeous about it is they're all in level amounts. You're not overloading on one or the other, which you can with meat, okay? You can get B vitamins in meat, but you're getting a wealth of B vitamins without a lot of mineral, right? So we need to balance things out, right? Plants are great for that. Now, scientists also found that some of the highest scoring plant foods for these nutrients are cruciferous vegetables, leafy greens, lettuce, and peppers. So eat more of those boost your mood. So bottom line is we all have the power to improve our own mood. We all have the power to improve our own health. We all have the power to prevent future illnesses. And how we do that is by treating our body well, by giving it good nutrition, by giving it a good source of vitamin and minerals. And by doing that, we lower our risk. We spend a lot of time talking about risk, especially lately, right? What's our risk of this? What's our risk of that? How do you know? Well, I can tell you the research supports that our risk for disease is lower with a primarily plant-based diet. If you're paying attention to what you're putting in and not putting in processed foods, you have a better chance of survival from the top diseases in America. I read something yesterday, um, on average, 2,500 people die a day of cardiovascular disease. Okay, a day, one person every 37 seconds. So during this broadcast, we lost a lot of people to cardiovascular disease. We need to change that, okay? Obesity, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, depression, anxiety, memory loss, like Alzheimer's, these are all things that we can improve by focusing on what we're putting into our bodies. So please, put good stuff in your bodies. Give your body some nutrition. And if you have a bad day, don't beat yourself up, but start over again. As I've always said, why do we fall down? So that we can learn how to get back up. If you fall down, get back up. Get back on the wagon. Don't let it take you down, okay? Because you are in full control of what you put in to your mouth, what you consume, what foods you make. And to be honest, once you start consuming them, your body will crave them more. So please, be well, feed yourself well today. I will see you guys tomorrow. I will be earlier tomorrow. I don't know how alert and bright I will be, but I have somewhere to be at nine o'clock. So I'm gonna be doing my broadcast quite a bit early. It's probably gonna be in the seven o'clock hour, but I will repost it. So if you're still asleep, that's okay. <laughs> Once again, my name is Dr. Trisha Pingle. This is your morning checkup. If you like what you hear, please share this. Share it. Share it with your friends. Tag your friends. Ask questions. I'll go in and ask, answer them. Uh, check out drpingle.com for more articles. Uh, you can check out my YouTube channel um, or some of my repostings on social media if you like these videos and if they're helpful to you. Thank you so much for being here. Have a fantastic Thursday. See you later.